Hi everyone, I'm Neil. Last week, Chinese Gaokao, the college entrance exam, has finished. It is the most important exam in every high school student's life. Now, the most difficult part is over, but it doesn't mean what's next is easy. Today, I'm going to talk about what comes after that, the college admission process. It's like diffusing a bomb for students. There are a number of decisions for them to make, and there are a bunch of uncertainties that they will need to face. If they screw up any of them, it's going to be a game over for them. The college admission process kicks off after students receive their Gakkan scores in a couple weeks. Then the mission of those students or the bomb for them to diffuse is going to be receive an offer from their gym school. So now let's first talk about how university decides who to admit. How a university decides which students to send offers to is quite straightforward. For example, a university only admits 500 new students this year. Then they will distribute those 500 numbers to each province as a quota. For example, like Beijing gets 60, Shanghai gets 20. Then when university receive all the students' applications from those provinces, they will study rank all the students based on their scores and then select the top, uh, say like 60 students from Beijing and the 20 students from Shanghai. Then they just make them offer, uh, mail them out, uh, do some logistics and welcome the new freshmen in the coming year. Now let's take a look at how the application looks like. Um, there's a basically a form that you will need to fill out like for the you know first batch of universities who is your first choice and who is your second choice and what major are you applying for and then similarly like you will also need to fill out your first choice second choice in the second batch of universities in China and then same you need to fill out your major and then you're done now it sounds quite easy right now, actually, it's very tricky. Think about it. I only know my own score and my rank in the province. Now I want to, you know, guarantee myself receive my dream school's offer. How that's possible? It's like I'm diffusing a bomb and I only have a pliar in my hand. Cutting the red line or blue line, I don't know how I can guarantee myself surviving in this bomb diffusing mission. I don't know. Right? Luckily, there's some help. We got a booklet that contains all the past five years of lowest admission score for each university. And then we also hear uh, rumors from uh, our teachers, parents, uh, friends about who with what score uh, will gonna apply for which university for what major. And then that's about it. We will need to make our best bet based on all of that limited, very preliminary information. It's like when you diffuse a bomb, you know for the past five bombs that you diffused, the lines you cut, you, you cut is uh, uh, red, blue, blue, red, blue. Now, what's your cut for, for this bomb? So if you choose a wrong line to cut, the bomb will explode. So let's take a look at if you make the wrong bet, what's going to happen in this university admission process. <laughs> to make things a little bit easier, let's say Liu Sha really wants to study math major in his dream school. At the same time, he has an okay school that he can okay attend, but maybe not that excited about. So scenario one, based on past five year stats, Liu Xia's gut feeling tells him that he has really good chance to receive offer from his dream school for major math with his score. But the fact turns out that every student with the same score or similar score thinks about the same way. So this year, um, his dream school is supposed to admit like 50 students, but receive like 200 applications. 
and Lusha is actually the 51st students based on the scores rank. So, bye, have a beautiful time. Still the same scenario. Lusha's gut feeling tells him that he has a really good chance to get offered from his dream school with math major. So he lists that school with math major as his first choice and he indicates that he's not okay to reassign to a different major. But it turns out that for that major in that school, they received lots of applications this year and there's no chance for Liu Sha to get an offer from that school for that specific major with his score. But it could have been possible for Liu Sha to get an offer from his dream school if he were okay to be reassigned to a different major. But he didn't. So, bye, have a beautiful time. Besides his dream school, Liu Sha also has an okay school in his mind. So, Liu Sha lists his dream school as a first choice and then his OK school as second choice. Here, a bit more on the admission process. In China, all the universities will take the first round to admit all the first choice students by, let's say, July um, 28th. And then after that date, they will start to consider second choices students only if they have open seats. But it turns out that in the round of first choice admission, Liu Xiao missed his dream school because his score isn't, let's say, top 50. Then, in the round of second choice admission, Liu Xiao's OK school already filled up, so they don't have any more open seats for second choice round. So Liu Xiao missed his OK school as well. So it's like Liu Xiao missed a little bit on the University of Washington, and then he has no chance to go to Washington State University as well. So, bye, have a beautiful time. So that's the nutshell of how Chinese university admission process works after Gaokao. It's a very complex process and has lots of variations based on regions and the provinces. I didn't cover them all, but hope you get a generic sense on how tricky, intense, and hard it is. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. At the same time, if you have any questions about China, please comment below, let us know, and I will see you next time.